Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. The concept of tuning vocals is a bit of a controversial topic to some, but today I'd like to show you a comparison between Reatune, which comes with Reaper, and Crispy Tuner by Plugin Alliance. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is a cover of a song called Sure by Emma Rosa. It's something I recorded a couple of days ago, and I tracked the guitars, bass, drums, and vocals myself. And while I'm not a great singer, I'm also not terrible, but my vocals did need a bit of tuning so it would sound better in the mix. Let's make sure that the tuning is turned on, and I'll let you hear a section of the song with my vocals. Crispy Tuner's currently engaged, and I'll go just a little bit before the verse, and let's take a listen to a little bit. And that sounds pretty good. Now let's go back and I'm going to embarrass myself a little bit and we'll take a listen to these same vocals with the tuning turned off. I'll hold shift and click on the plugin in the effects list here. And there goes my phone. I should probably put that on silent while I'm recording. Phone's on silent now. So now with Crispy Tuner disabled, I'll go back and play that same passage and you'll be able to hear that my vocals are not perfectly in tune. And as I said before, it's not bad, but you can tell that I was pretty flat in several parts of it there. That was a single take, so there's no comping or anything going on there, that's just one natural take. Now let's solo these vocals and I'll embarrass myself even further, and I'll open up the interface for Crispy Tuner. As you can see, I like to use Crispy Tuner in graphical mode because it gives me much more precise control over the correction of the notes. Let's take a listen to this first section here. And currently, we don't have the correction turned on. So this is what my voice sounds like naturally. Sure that I... That's the wrong part, so we'll back up a bit to the beginning of the verse, which is where I wanted to be. This interface is still taking me a little bit of time to get used to, so you may get to see me fumble through this just a little bit. And I'm not open... And we take this section right here, where it looks like this should be a D, I believe. So I'll go ahead and turn on the tuning and we can listen to the before and after again. So here's with the tuning. And I'm not open. And without. And I'm not open. And I'm not open. Right, I'll play this through one more time in its entirety without the tuning and then we'll go back and play it again with the tuning. And next I'll open up Reatune and we'll recreate the same thing using built-in tools in Reaper. Let's take a listen. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. And I can't even tell you where I am right now. Cause I don't feel like she don't feel right. We shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here we are. And I've already changed my face. Sure that I'm okay. And that same passage again with the tuning enabled. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. And I can't even tell you where I am right now. Cause I don't feel right, she don't feel right. We shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here we are. And I've already changed my face. Sure that I'm okay. Now that sounds a lot better to my ear with the tuning, and I'm able to dial in the tuning pretty well with Crispy Tuner to where it still sounds pretty natural. I'll disable that plugin, and we'll go back into my effects chain here and add Reatune. I'll move that to the same relative position that Crispy Tuner was in initially. And if we take a look at the interface for Reatune, first we've got the tuner, which I'll use that in later episodes to show you how to tune up your guitars and basses before you start tracking. That is irrelevant for the example that we're doing today. 
The second tab is for automatic pitch correction, which we will not be using, but there's some other parameters in here that we'll need to make some adjustments for. If you know the key of the song, it's a good idea to go ahead and put it in because that will help in the manual correction phase. But this song is in G minor, so I'll go ahead and set my key to G minor, and that limits the notes that are available. If you do decide to use the automatic pitch correction, the parameter for attack time dictates how quickly the tuner will respond to a note that's out of key. This parameter works in the automatic correction section as well as the manual, and I like to set this, uh, I guess it really depends on the performance, but in this case, I believe from previous testing, somewhere around 50 milliseconds works pretty well. And the vocal is in mono, so I'll disable a stereo correction. The next set of parameters is the algorithm, which dictates how Reattune goes about correcting your pitch. I'll put this on Elastic 3.3.3 Pro for the time being, and there's other parameters that admittedly I've not messed with a whole lot, but if you find that you're getting unnatural results from your tuning, you can ad make adjustments to these and see if you can find the algorithm and the parameter that works best for your voice. Next we'll go to the Manual Correction tab. Open this up a bit where we can see. And if we take a look at the piano roll on the left, we've got red X's on every note that is not in the key of the song. The first thing that we'll need to do is to track the pitch. We'll have to suffer through my vocals once again and allow this to capture the vocals. I'll make sure that I'm back at the right place right before the verse, and let's play this through and allow Reattune to capture those vocals. And you'll begin to see it plotting the notes on the piano roll. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. And I can't even tell you where I am right now. Cause I don't feel like right. she don't feel right. We shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here we are. And I've already changed my face. Sure that I'm okay. All right, we've got that data captured. And once again, I apologize for forcing you to endure my voice for so long. Let's zoom in a little bit, and as you can see, as we zoom in here, this interface is not too terribly different from Crispy Tuner's graphical mode or Melodyne or other vocal tuning applications. We'll hop back into Reattune here, and let's take a listen to this first little portion here. And I'm not open. And what we'll need to do next is to engage the manual correction, and we can begin to draw lines on here to add correction. For example, here at the beginning, that note should be an A3, and I'm mostly on it, but let's go ahead and draw a line here to indicate that we want this note to be an A3. If we look back at our correction tab, this attack time once again dictates how quickly that Reattune will respond. If I wanted to sound like T-Pain, for example, I can put this to zero milliseconds, and I'll go ahead and draw in these next sections here. This should be a C, and this, I believe, should be a D4. So let's take a listen. And I'm not open. And I do not like that robotic sound at all. So we'll go back here into the correction tab and adjust that to about 50 milliseconds and try again. And I'm not open. Feeling most. I think maybe this was supposed to be an A sharp. Let's try that again. Usually I'll have my guitar nearby to where I can reference these notes and make sure. I'll fumble through it for now though. And I'm not open. Feeling that sounds better on the A sharp. Go ahead and draw it in the same thing for the next part, which I know is an identical run. And I'm not open, feeling emotion. That's sounding pretty good. We'll move on down a bit, change my zoom factor. And I'm using control and my mouse wheel to zoom vertically, and alt and the mouse wheel to scroll. Put this back on the A sharp to a C. And A sharp again, and let's take a listen to this first section again. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. Now right here, I don't like the way that this jumps. I think that I want to make some minor adjustments, plus I wasn't actually on the C. Uh, we can move the ends of these bars to help better dial in the tuning. And you'll notice a couple of other parameters up here that we can not allow overlapping segments and also prevent octave shifts. For example, I can't continue to drag this note to where it overlaps the other, and that comes in very handy. Sometimes you'll find that you'll have to shorten these to where it actually doesn't cover all of the note, just to make sure that it doesn't engage the note too quickly. Let's take a listen to this section again and see if that fixes that problem. And I'm not open. Actually, right here on the first part, I don't like some of the wavering that I've got. Um, let's make sure that I've got that locked in correctly on the note. And I think I'd like to break this up a little bit to prevent some of that stabilization. Let's try this. And I'm not open. 
there. That helped to avoid what I felt like was a bit of overcorrection in the section here. Try it again. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. And I can't even tell you where I am. Back on this section, we can tell that that was definitely a bit flat. Let's try to correct that to a D. Tell you where I that sounds better already, and we'll go back and correct the other parts. I believe that's supposed to primarily be a C, and maybe down to the A sharp. I'm purely guessing at notes here because I am not classically trained, but we'll work through this together. And I can't even tell you where I am. Sounding pretty good. We'll draw these into what I believe is correct. And again, if you've got an instrument nearby, whether it be a keyboard or a guitar, something to where you can verify what note these are supposed to be, that comes in very handy. And I can't even tell you where I am. Right now. That looks like that should be an F. Let's make sure. Right now. Sounds good. Cause I don't feel like that F was missed. And I know that there's more F's here that look to be flat, so I'll go ahead and, and correct those. Cause I don't feel like I believe that's supposed to be the C4 to the A sharp again. Cause I don't feel like she don't feel right. Cause I don't feel like she don't now, there is a bit of a jump here that I will likely not correct. I think that that may sound fine naturally, even though it looks terrible. I'll go ahead and add in the A sharp, and let's spot check this again. Cause I don't feel like she don't feel right. Okay, it looks like that is a scoop, I think it's called. So I'll just go ahead and add in the correction to the C4 after that little part that goes up a bit and see how that sounds. Cause I don't feel like she don't feel right. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here we are. There we have missed a couple of Fs again. That was a bit flat. And that's F4 to C4 each time. With a D4 there and back down to C4. And let's back up and try this again. We shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here we now, this one sounded a bit unnatural. Let's try that again. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't. We'll try just adjusting the length of the correction to allow some of these natural slurs to occur. And that sounded pretty bad right in there. I think maybe I want to go back and make the correction not quite as aggressive. And let's try 60 milliseconds. We'll just break this one up a bit. That may help that even more. Uh, what happens when you break this up is it essentially resets the attack parameter and lets it listen to the portion of vocals again and basically just reassess whether it needs to correct or not. That sounds a bit better. We may need to move a few of these to get a little bit more correction in there. That's sounding pretty good. Now that D4 was quite flat. Let's uh, get that fixed. That was, I think that was supposed to be a G. Let's try that. And I've already changed my face. Sure that I'm F is flat. Looks like we've got an A sharp here and a C4 here. Sure that I'm okay. Right, now that sounds pretty good. Let's take a listen to it in context because the music will help to hide some of those artifacts that we hear with the correction. There's some things that I'm hearing in there that I actually like a lot better than Crispy Tuner, particularly in this section where I say I've already changed my face. Let's take a listen to that portion and then we'll compare that to Crispy Tuner. And I'll solo the vocals, maybe you'll hear it. And I've already changed my face. 
So take a listen to that one more time and listen to the note correction on the word change. And I've already changed my face. And we'll go back and compare that to Crispy Tuner. And I've already changed my face. And I've already changed my foot. I definitely do not like the way that that's doing the correction there. Now, I may be able to fix that in Crispy Tuner. Let's take a quick look and see if I can get that to work here. My toolbar is not working for some reason. I'll just pick it manually. And I've already changed my Maybe correct it a little bit faster. And I've already changed my foot. And I've already changed my foot. That actually sounds a lot better there by adjusting the transition time and the tightness in Crispy Tuner. And I've already changed my face. All right, let's go back to the beginning of the verse and I'll play these soloed and compare the two. We'll start with, let's see, we'll start with Crispy Tuner. And I'm not open, feeling Let me try that again and see if I can get the GUI to follow us here. And I'm not there we go, and get this armed again to where we can swap back and forth easily. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. And I can't even tell you where I am right now. Cause I don't feel right, she don't feel right. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here with her. And I've already changed my face. Sure that I'm okay. And we'll run that same passage again, but this time with Reattune. And I'm not open, feeling emotion, put it away. And I can't even tell you where I am right now. Cause I don't feel right, she don't feel right You shouldn't be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be here with her And I've already changed my face Sure that I'm okay and Both of those, to my ears, sound really good. I believe that either one of those would pass in a mix. Uh, if you can stand to hear my voice two more times, let's listen to those again and compare them in the mix. We'll start with Crispy Tuner. And once again with Reattune. Both of those, to my ears, sound really good. Uh, now, one thing that I did fail to mention in Reattune is after you're done with your tuning, be sure to uncheck this track pitch option. That will prevent Reattune from analyzing the data again. Once you've already got the data captured, there's no need to continue to analyze it because you can just draw your corrections in and be done with it. With all that said, Retune, in my opinion, is a powerful alternative to some of the higher priced vocal tuning applications. It really depends on your performer. Now, it's best to do what you can to get things right at the source, but if you have a pretty good singer and just need a little bit of correction, don't sleep on Reattune because it can definitely get the job done for you. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. Check the link in the description to join us on Discord and engage with other Active Reaper users. We'll see you next time. Never let them see you sing on camera, man. They're not ready.